Shalom, Ahab, Wa Baraka. First and foremost, all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, And double honors to all of the uh, sincere prophets bringing out this 100% truth. First things first. We just finished the Passover. We just finished the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And now we're going to get into the next heathen holiday that's coming up, which I wouldn't call it a holiday. The next heathen ritual they're getting ready to um, take part in is called Easter. So, um, you know, Revelation 12 and 9, Satan would deceive the whole world. Keep that in mind. The, um, but what this is, this is going to be more of a, a history lesson than uh, it's, it's going to be more facts about these. Like I said, these are about, this is about the heathens now. So I'm going to show you some stuff about the heathens that you might not know. So um, just get comfortable. We're going to start at a, a, a book called the two Babylons, like I said, since I, if I don't have the book, I'll literally write word for word the page and everything, Alexander Hyssop, who, who wrote the book. But I'm going to tell you what page it's on, and then I'm going to write word for word what it says, the important part that pertains to the point I'm getting to. So that's how I get this. So I, I, I literally will write the, the book down if you can see that I don't know but um, that's the only way you can get it sometimes and um, I mean you can go online don't get me wrong but I've had stuff that I've looked up before and I was able to find it and now it doesn't exist so I write everything down when I see it so anyway this book's called The Two Babylons by Alexander Hyssop, page 93. A, um, the festival of which we read in church history under the name of Easter in the third or fourth centuries was quite a different festival. From that church now observed that from, from that um, from that now observed in the um, Romanish church and at that time was not known by any such name as Easter. We didn't, they didn't call it Easter back then. Well, what did they call it? It was called Pesach or the Passover. So what they're doing is they're masking one of their heathen rituals over a righteous high holy day. Did you see that? They called it Easter. Right away, they've changed the name. It was very early observed by many professing Christians in commemoration of the death and resurrection of Christ. So, they took the Passover which we all know is when the angel of death, when Yahweh Shai came as the angel of death, and anybody that was following the instructions in uh, the nation of Israel, and they did exactly what he said, put the blood over the doors, had the lamb, did everything according to his instruction, those people were passed over. And they were not, they didn't have to suffer the death of their firstborn son. Okay, that's simple. They're trying to change it into Easter, the death and resurrection of Christ. That we don't we don't celebrate the death of the uh, of of the of Yahweh Shai, the son of the Creator. We don't celebrate his death. We don't do stuff like that. Okay, well let's keep going. Socrates, the, um, the Orient Ecclesiastical Historian, 
after um, a lengthy account of the different ways in which Easter was observed in different countries in his time, i.e. the 5th, 15th century, I'm sorry, the 5th century, sums up the, uh, um, these words. Thus, much already laid down may seem to prove that the celebration of Easter being um, everywhere more of a custom than by any commandment. So he's saying a whole bunch of countries are doing this. And they're all doing it as a custom. There was no command. There is no Levitical law, in other words, that tells us to celebrate Easter. Let's find out what Easter is, though. I mean, we haven't even got that far yet. So, either of Christ or any apostles. So, in other words, Christ didn't command it. The apostles didn't command it. It's not in the Levitical law. In fact, it commands against it. So, let's go back to the two Babylons, Alexander Hyssop, page 96. Such is the history of Easter, the popular observance that still attend the period of its celebration amply confirm the testimony of history as it is Babylonian. It's it as it as it it is Babylonian in characteristics. In other words, it has a Babylonian character to it. In other words, they're telling you that what they're masking over Passover with is an ancient Babylonian holiday or ritual that they used to do in Babylon. The custom of Easter brings a paper trail all the way back to Babylon. Literally in my notes. The custom of Easter brings a paper trail all the way back to Babylon, not to um, Yahweh's resurrection. There's Easter and Yahweh rising three days later have nothing to do with each other. It's like way over here is Easter, way over here on the far left hand side, and rising on the third day is a righteous thing that happened over here. So, but it gets better. The hot cross buns of Good Friday and the dyed eggs uh, of Pesach or Easter Sunday figured in the Chaldean rites. Oh man, the Chaldeans, who are those? Uh, um, uh, also known as, um, because they, I'm not even going to get into it. Let's just stick with this. The Chaldeans, right? just as they do now. So the Chaldeans had uh, a whole Babylonian celebration. I'm going to show you that this goes back way further than them uh, crucifying Yahweh and him rising on the third day, which was prophesied in the Bible. The Torah, uh, Tanakh, Apocrypha, New Testament. Anyway, so, uh, so it was um, implemented into Christianity. I'm an Israelite. I don't do Christianity, so I can see from being when when they tried to make me into a Christian when I was a kid, and and I couldn't quite fit in. I know why now, but I didn't understand back then. I was just uncomfortable. So I knew I couldn't accept their doctrine. But um, in Christianity, they, uh, they teach this like it's part of the Bible. So right away from being outside, you know it's not part of it. You, you, know, you know something's wrong with this because it goes back to Babylon. It doesn't have anything to do with our scriptures. But anyway, the buns. 
Let's get to the hot cross buns. The buns known to by the identical name were used in the worship of the queen of heaven. So the buns were used, so these hot cross buns that everybody's cooking on Easter and all the food, it's not going up to Yahweh Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai. It was, it was, I, it, it was, they were used in the worship of the queen of heaven, the goddess Easter. As early as the days of the, um, um, I, I don't even know how to say it, Creops, the, 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 um, Creops, uh, the founder of Athens, in other words, who, the, the founder of Athens, um, I forget how to say his name. In fact, it was about 15, 15,000 years or something like that before the Christian era. So it was, it was a long time before the Christian era. They were already, so, so, so over a thousand years before the crucifixion and resurrection of Yahawashai, they were already they were already um, dealing with bunnies and dyed eggs. So they had bunny rabbits and dyed eggs. And we're gonna find out a little bit about this. The queen mother of heaven worship. Because the bunny rabbits and the dyed eggs are gonna you're going to find out that they represent fertility. So this is a holiday representing fertility. But let's go ahead and go into the book of Jeremiah, chapter 7. And verse 18. The children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire. And the women knead the, their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. This is in Jeremiah. There's 500 years just in the apocrypha alone before it gets to the book of Matthew. Think of it like that. They're already celebrating big over here. And um, let me let me read it again. And the children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. So what are they doing right there? Hmm. Let me show you. You know, it's funny because when you read the next verse, let's see what happens for real. Do they provoke me to anger, saith Yahweh? Do they not provoke themselves to confusion of their own bases? So in other words... Aren't they putting their own self in shame? Worshiping false gods? Let's stay uh, in the two Babylons. We're still on page 96. The hot cross buns are, 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 The hot cross buns are um, hot now. They're, they're, they're not now offered by eating on the festival of Astarte, Easter. So Astarte is the real name of Easter. 
Astarte is the queen mother of heaven. When you take part in the Easter ritual, it's actually the Astarte ritual. And it, it's, it's a false god worship that really just puts you in shame because you're, you're literally putting yourself in the outer darkness. It shows that you have no faith. You don't follow instructions. You're against Christ. That makes you an antichrist. This, these, are the, these are the things that you are when you celebrate these days when it tells you not to. You're everything that this book is speaking against. Okay, but anyway, let's keep going. You're, so when you're, when you're cooking the hot cross buns and you offer them up and then you eat them on the festival of, of Astarte, you're sending your food up to Astarte. Not up to Yahweh, like I told you five minutes ago. You're sending your food up to the false gods, which it's going nowhere, like just nowhere. Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Astra is plural of um, Ashtoreth, the name of any fertile goddess of the ancient Near East Babylon. And then uh, it is Ishtar in um, Greek or Astarte or in Babylonian it's Ishtar and in Greek it's, start, it's Astarte. Canaan, a consort of Baal, the wife of Baal. Who is Baal she married to? So, but when I when I'm just I'm just reading through my notes and what it's saying here um, in the Zondervan Bible Dictionary that um, Baal married the Queen Mother of Heaven. So the Lord of the Flies. Uh, married uh, uh, Astarte, which is the queen mother of heaven. So, Zonavan Bible Dictionary, Baal, or Lord of the Flies, named under which the Baal was worshipped by the Philistines of Ekron. There can be little doubt that Beelzebub is the same name as Baalzebub, Matthew 12 and 24. Beelzebub is the prince of the devils. Satan. So let's let's just read Matthew 12 and 24 real quick. Let's not leave out any verse because honestly, this history lesson, why would the Bible have anything to do with this? You know what I'm saying? I already told you. You get the verses saying, don't do it. Moving on, what else does it need to tell you? But no, nope, we got to go in and show you the full history so you know exactly how you're worshiping false gods because people and you know what Christ need not probably I'll keep it 1000 you definitely gonna still celebrate even if you see this class before Easter guaranteed so let's go to Matthew 12 and 24 and see what it says but when the Pharisees heard it is this 12 and 24 did I say 12 and 24 Yes, but when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Baal Zebub, the prince of the devils. Okay, so Baal Zebub is the, the, the prince of all devils. The, and what does devil mean? Um, um, bearer of false witness. So, anyway, let's keep going. The, the the prince of devils. So this is all false gods anyway. So this is their um this is what this is guy we would call Satan. Not like the spiritual the spiritual Satan, not Satan the adversary. So when they're saying that he's the prince of devils, he's saying like a spiritual devil. 
like uh, like like Satan. But anyway, but this leaves no doubt to whence they have been derived. The origin of the posh egg is as clear. So we know now that the hot cross buns and and that you're cooking up, it's actually one of the Queen Mother of Heaven. The Queen Mother of Heaven married Beelzebub, who is Satan. So Satan has a wife. According to all your um, false gods. So now let's get into the egg. The ancient Druids. So we know who those guys are. They're Khazarian, they're Amalekites. They came out of the um, out of Russia. The ancient Druids bore an egg as a sacred emblem of their order. In the um, Dionysica or Mysteries of Bacchus, as celebrated in Athens, one part of the natural ceremony considered in the um, consecration of an egg. So, I'm sorry, the let's try this again. My handwriting is not as good as I thought. So, it, in Athens, one part of the nocturnal ceremony consisted in the consecration of an egg. And nocturnal, what does that mean? It's done in the dark. The Hindu fables celebrate their mandane egg as of a golden color, or color, and which means color. The people of Japan, their sacred egg have to have been brazen, so they had a bro a, bro a bronze egg, I guess. In China, yep, everybody's been doing this since ever. So this ain't nothing new under the sun. Anyway, in China, dyed or painted eggs are used on sacred festivals. Even as in this country, in ancient times, eggs were used in the religious rites of the Egyptians and the Greeks and were hung up for mystic purposes in their temples. Mm. You got your kids out there searching for these eggs. From Egypt, these sacred eggs can be distinctly tracked to the banks of the Euphrates. So... I mean, I, I don't even have to keep going. You should see, you know where this is going. Everybody under the sun has been worshiping the Queen Mother of Heaven since the Egyptian times, which is before Babylonian times. Let's keep going. The classic poets are full of the fables of the mystic egg of the of, of the uh, Babylonian and thus its tale is told by by um, Hyginus the Egyptian. So this is I guess an Egyptian god by Hyginus the Egyptian. The learned keeper of the Palatine Library at Rome. Okay, so let me just keep going. In the time of Augustus, who was killed in all the wisdom of his native country, an egg of wondrous size is said to have fallen from heaven into the river Euphrates. The fish roll it to the bank where the doves have settled upon it and hatched it and out came Venus 
who afterwards was called the Syrian goddess. That is Astarte. Hence, the egg became of uh, like one of it became the it became the symbol of Astarte or Easter. <clears throat> All right, here we go again. Satan gave his wife a holy day and got the whole world to celebrate it. <laughs> it's very interesting. I don't, I mean, this stuff, it's really hard for me to, to even go through this history because it's not in the scripture anywhere. It's just false God. That's why I won't even call it a holiday. That's, that holy means holy, which means set apart. To be set apart means to be righteous. So, no, it's a ritual that you guys take part in. There's nothing holy about it. There's nothing righteous about it. Let's keep going. And according, in, accordingly, in Cyprus, one of the um, chosen seats of the worship of Venus, or Astarte, the egg of wondrous size was presented on a grand scale. And people want to keep this tradition because they think it's good for the kids. Oh, I'm doing it for the kids. Well, but it actually just, it's like, how should I say this? Um, when a person says they're, they're doing it from the kids, or for the kids, I mean. Really, they're doing it for themselves. They like that fuzzy little feeling they used to get when they were a kid. So they want to teach their kid to have that feeling. But the problem is, is that they're dealing with their emotions. Who deals with the emotions? Satan deals with emotion. Yahweh has no respect of persons. So Yahweh is going to deal with the words that he put in this book for us to have an instruction on how to live our lives. And what did Yahweh say? I deal with the laws, the statutes within the laws, and the direct commandments he gave me. I don't deal with emotion. He's not going to deal with your emotions. He's going to deal with the laws, the statutes within the laws, and the direct commandments he gave you. So if you think you're going to go up to judgment and get all emotional, I doubt you even make it to judgment. I don't even know why you want to see you. He can't be in the presence of unrighteousness. But anyway, page 97 on the two Babylons, Alexander Hissa. New Romanish church adopted the mystic egg of Astarte and consecrated it as a symbol of Christ's resurrection. So they literally took the Passover, turned it into a celebration of the death and resurrection of Christ, and then took their uh, uh, satanic ritual and added that to it. So now we got the death of Christ being represented with an Astarte egg. That, that, that's what's happening right there. Okay. Um, the first seven ecumenical councils, Leo Davis, page 68. And the second 
declaration, the bishops ruled that Easter should be celebrated at the same time throughout the empire. The same time as what? Same time as Passover. They are literally taking our, so they took the Passover and they did this to it. They turned it slowly into something else. Esteemed as the potter's clay. They just take things and just remold it slowly into something different. And over a period of time, you don't, like when we were children, I didn't wake up, I wasn't born in the truth. My kids are, but I'm not. I remember searching for Easter eggs, wondering, even as a child, what do Easter bunnies and eggs have to do with Jesus? Uh, but uh, it has nothing to do with it. And now I know that I wasn't even celebrating. I, I, not only was I uh, celebrating Easter, but when I close my eyes and I say, Jesus, I see a white guy with with blonde hair and blue eyes, and he's always got this docile look on his face, not eyes of flaming fire and hair that was white like wool and skin that was burnt in a furnace. I didn't even, I don't know. So I know that, that this is a whole different thing than what people are doing. This has, that Christians have nothing to do with, uh, following the look with, with following the law statutes and commandments with, with being one of the children of Israel and doing what Yahweh Shai told us to because he's an example for us and what did he do he followed the laws the statutes within the laws and the direct commands that's what he was teaching us all right let's keep going so we know that now they've decided that it was a declaration that the bishops ruled it would be celebrated the same time as Passover because the Gentiles didn't want to stop celebrating. They didn't want to stop being Gentiles. And the heathens, never, they, they, they definitely weren't going to do any type of Passover because they never did it in the first place. So we know what Gentiles they're talking about right now. Israelites, they refuse to keep the laws. Let's keep going. Let's go to um, Acts 16. Let me read um, Acts 16, and we're going to start at verse 20. And um, this, is, this is Paul right here. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains, well, this is verse 19, let's go to verse 20, and brought them into the magistrate, saying, These men, bring, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble in our city. So Paul held a woman and got accused of breaking the law and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. I told you these heathens ain't keeping our laws, not in any way, shape or form. It is against the heathens law to keep Yahweh's law. It's breaking Yahweh's law to keep their laws. You understand that? It, we're, we're breaking our rules to keep their rules. And they're breaking their rules to keep our rules. So there's a sever. There is a separation between us right here in this verse. We are not like them, and they are not like us. The Most High didn't choose them. It is unlawful for them to keep the law of the Jews. Think about that. So go and celebrate your false gods. Go finish up whatever you're doing. 
But when when you're all when it's all said and done, the Creator Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai and His Son Yahweh Shai are they're coming. Yahweh Shai is coming to do the work. Yahweh is going to send the message, and He's going to send it through His Son, and then His Son's going to sit on the throne, and there won't be any more of these false gods. We won't have to teach you any classes about false gods. But anyway, so let's go to um, Acts chapter 12. All this stuff's getting taken away. I'm, I'm going to be happy. Okay, I'm going to um, go into... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into um, Acts chapter. I'm going to start at verse 1. Though. This is James and Peter. So, now about that time, Herod, the king, stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. So he came in and killed James. He's dead now. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, they were happy to see James go. They didn't want him. They were there. It, it, it all comes down to politics. If these guys, if everybody was to hear what the the apostles are teaching, what's going to happen is, is they're going to start following the correct um, instruction. And the other Jews, are, the Jews are going to lose their position. So they won't be leaders over the people any longer. It's all about position. It's, 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 it's messing with their position right now. So anyway, and because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then there were the days of unleavened bread. So... And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four um, um, court, um, um, courtians of sword, soldiers. I probably said that wrong. To keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Did you see that? It said over here, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, there, then were the days of Feast of Unleavened Bread, and over here they say Easter. So what did they just do right there? What did they just do? They grafted the word grafted. They grafted that word into the Bible. They, I just showed you where in... Um, in the first, uh, um, a comical councils, first time of comical councils, Leo Davis, page 68, in the second declaration, the bishops ruled that Easter should be celebrated at the same time throughout the empire, the same time as Passover. So what did they do? They pushed it right into the Bible and grafted the word right in there. And we all know uh, Pascal is the Passover. The word Passover should be in that place. And they took it out and put Easter there. And now we got a bunch of Christians going, nope, Easter's in the Bible. It says right there, so we got to go ahead and celebrate that. But when you do the research, you realize, man, this is a satanic holiday. Not a holiday. This is a satanic ritual that we're taking part in. So. It 
So in the uh, Greek Bible is Pascal. Pascal. Right? And so this is the Greek word used in the Greek Bible translated to English. And Pascal was used 29 times in the Bible. The word Easter only appears once ever. But in Greek, the word where they have Easter is Pascal, which means Passover. So the Greek Bible still has the correct wording. It's the English Bible is where they changed it. And this is why you have a lot of people going, oh man, but that Bible did bubble bop, bop, bop. Well, they're, in a way, I guess you could say that they would almost be right. But if you challenge everything, you know that in English, this is called the stammering tongue according to the Bible, because you can take one word and it have three or four different meanings. When you take something back to Hebrew, each Hebrew word has one meaning. So the word will change if the meaning changes. Even slightly, it's always going to be different. So when you do look up stuff in this book, you have to go back to the Hebrew. And then what you do is you retranslate the original Hebrew by definition back into the English. And you will understand which definition of the 20 definitions for each word that it's talking about. So that's how we keep a good understanding of what the scriptures are actually saying. You have to do your research. All right. So back to um, the two Babylons, Alexander Hissa, page 93. Everybody knows that the name Easter used in our translation of, of Acts 12 and 4 refers not to any Christian festival, but to the, to the, um, to the Passover. And, of course, in the two Babylons, they're going to say Jewish Passover. But I refuse to say that. It's the Passover for the Yasharala. In other words, the Israelites. Judah is one tribe. And Judah is the top tribe. Don't get me wrong, but one of 12. It's not the 12 tribes of Judah. Whoever told you that lied to you. It's the 12 tribes tribes of Israel. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. He is our forefather. So is Judah, but Judah is the son of Jacob. It's the 12 tribes of Israel, and Judah is uh, the fourth born son. So, anyway, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Everybody knows that the word Easter isn't supposed to be there. And we're talking about Christian scholars, too. This is one of the few places in our version where the translation shows that they are putting in a bias. They're trying to push their agenda. They want things the way they want them, so they don't want to change. They're all heathens and Gentiles, so they want to keep celebrating heathens and Gentile holidays or rich do heathen and Gentile rituals. We have holidays, holy days. You guys have rituals. That's all there is to it. And when there's this kind of a bias directly in your face in this book, it has, it has the uh, Satan... The adversary, that's who's written all over that. It's got him written all over it, clear, clear as day. You can see that he's had his hands on, on our book. That's why I'm telling you, you got to really do your research and take things back to the Hebrew. And it's really easy. Every, you, you, got, you got the Blue Letter Bible on, online right now. You've got, um, um, this is another good book to have too. The um, King James Version, Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, 
that that one will help you a lot also. And there there I think I paid I paid fifteen dollars for this book at the bookstore. It wasn't like I had to go pay hundreds of dollars for it. It wasn't that much. So anyway, it's all right there for you. You just gotta go out and search it because when you see things like. Uh, Acts 12 and 4, where they're using the word Easter in place of Passover, it has Satan written all over it because it's clear um, mistranslation in the Bible. It's a clear mistranslation. Purpose. A purposely, they purposely mistranslated that to throw you off. You go to any book that's not in English, it's going to say Passover. Zondervan, Bible Dictionary. It says, um, Zondervan Bible Dictionary, Acts 12 and 4, King James Version. Correctly translated Passover in the ASV. The powers that be will never fix it because... The powers that be will never fix it because the um, honestly, it's because they 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 profit from it. They have a power over you from it. It keeps you from following the instructions. Also. Plus, let me let me put it to you this way. These guys are never gonna change this. Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai is coming down and change this. They keep a power over you. They keep you in their witchcraft. They've got you lied to to the point where you justify it to yourself. But remember this. I want you to remember about the powerful people that you're listening to because they're so smart and they wouldn't lie to you. I want you to remember one important thing about your leaders. To have power in this current world we live in, you have to deal with Satan. So in other words, you, you've got to be dealing with Satan. If you don't follow Satan, he will remove you and get someone else to take your place. So if you don't push their agenda, they're going to remove you. If you do push their agenda, you become rich, famous, uh, a speaker for your people. Uh, what do they do though? What do they do? What do they teach you? They teach you everything that's foul. Go get, go get the V, put on a mask, be scared of everything. But let's get back into it. Let's go to Matthew chapter 28. You know, my um, stepdad would always leave when we got older and we were still celebrating Easter because we didn't know anything. Told him yesterday, man, you had one of them right. You had one of them right. Because he's still in the world, but he never celebrated Easter. Right. And I have to give him respect for that instantly. So we're going to go over ahead and go to Matthew chapter 28. And we're just going to um, start at verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath. As it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, 
came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came down and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. He was wearing a white garment. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and become as dead men. Either they actually had heart attacks and died or they passed out. I'm going to say they passed out because they became as dead men. It didn't say that they died. But they just dropped right there on the spot. The Lord ah! went to sleep. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Yahweh Shai, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where Yahweh Shai lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. So, she went in there. And, um... He was already gone. So, they celebrate Easter on Sunday, which is the first day of the week. Which doesn't um, line up to anything that... Uh, that they were, um, it doesn't line up to any of that. So we're going to go to the book of Matthew chapter 12 because they, you know, okay, so Yahushai, he, he was crucified in three days. He rose. Well, they were saying that he rose on Easter Sunday. Well, see, the problem with Sunday is it's literally the first day of the week, not the, um, so if we were going by how they keep their track of time from their, their, they're saying that the first day of the week is, we all know the first day of the week is Sunday, but they're saying that that's their Sabbath. So let's go to... Matthew 12 and um, 40. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So... Good Friday. We're going to go by their calculations with their mathematical equation. Let's see. Friday to Sunday. Good Friday. So three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Friday to Sunday, according to Christians. The math on that's hella wrong. Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> Three days, Friday. <laughs> he was cruised right on Friday. So here. Yeah. How about this? Friday to Saturday. Saturday to Sunday. <laughs> Wednesday to Saturday equals three days. The Christian church is... <laughs> purposely lying. They're, they're doing this on purpose. They're trying to push their agenda. They're like trying to make it all work. But you see, Christianity doesn't work. It's botched. 
It's like you you know it, you see it, you understand the math, and then you go into denial, and then you hide Easter eggs, you get a basket full of candy, you cook a ham, and then you cook the, the, the hot cross buns, you have everybody over, they're all praying to the God. What God are you praying to when it says that this is a false worship? This is a this is a, a um this is a ritual. This isn't a high holy day. So um Exodus chapter 12, 3 through 28, pretty much, is how you keep the Passover. Now we've already done the Passover class, so I'm not gonna go into that again. You already know how to keep the Passover. If you don't, if I have a three-part class completely explaining it in, in as much detail as I can, showing you every possible aspect. So go watch it. So what do we do? The uh let's 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 okay, so let's just um we're gonna close out here. And I want to say it like this, though. We, we are commanded in Levitical law to keep the Passover, to put the blood on the doors and to eat the lamb with bitter herbs to all generations. A solemn assembly, a serious gathering of the people. Okay, now, solemn, serious, a serious gathering of the people. We break down scriptures. We, we do things the way the scriptures say to do them. Now, Easter, they turned a solemn assembly into an egg hunt. It's for the kids, man. It's just for the kids. No, it's not. It's for you. So, you can't keep these holidays or these rituals. You can't keep our high holidays and keep pagan rituals and be keeping 613 commandments. Hot cross buns or a feast of unleavened bread. You've got to understand, there is a sever. There's a separation between you having a hot cross bun and an Easter egg hunt versus having bitter herb and lamb and everybody being in a serious frame of mind. Does it sound like a serious frame of mind to go on an Easter egg hunt? To cook a ham that's commanded from the beginning all the way into the end of this book not to eat? to not follow and worship false gods, you've been warned. I'm gonna get one more verse and we're gonna close out there. I'm gonna get one more verse. I wanna... I just want to say this. For all of you people that are following the laws, the statutes within the laws, and the direct commands with sincerity and gladness in your heart, Revelations 21 and 7 for you. He that overcometh all um, shall in, he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be is God and he shall be my son. That's for all of you sincere uh, Israelites that are in the truth. But for the rest of you, verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderous and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So when we get taken up and they shoot this place with 
missiles and it turns into a damn lake of fire when we're watching it, we warn you. Now, if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, most high willing you got something out of this message. Shalom.